Dahi Regan, a very good morning to you. How good was that All Ireland final replay on Saturday afternoon? Ah, it's one of the one of the best club finals without a shadow of a doubt. Fantastic, two brilliant club sides. I mean, you just look at the record. The last three years between them, they've shared it. Considering how many brilliant clubs there are in the country, that's really unique. I mean, you've got to you've got to win so many games your own county championship, your provincial championship. So it was two magnificent teams going at it. And at the end of, you know, whatever it was, 120, 140, 160 minutes, it, there was very, very little to separate them. And uh, thoroughly enjoyable. Everyone you spoke to, it was, it was just a talk of the place. You know, the quality, the standard of hurling. And it's, if, if you look at even the likes of Henry Shefflin, I've been asked about the highlight of his career, winning, winning with Bally Hale. You know, I, I know the greatest day I ever had in the hurling field was was with Bor in '98, our second final. Just just happens to stick out, and it's it's just magnificent what it does. But the the type of hurling, the quality of hurling, you know, it's why there's a place for the club, the club players association, because these guys are up to the fitness levels of intercounty players. It was an extraordinary game of hurling. And it was a real, real pity someone had to lose. But that's sport, and it's why sport is fantastic. And yet. Cool to go at it in a couple of weeks' time again in the club championship. Extraordinary level. Uh, Matty Kenny and his management team, um, just absolutely fantastic. An extraordinary game of hurling, O'Sheen. And I know you were there and you interviewed some of the boys afterwards. An extraordinary game of hurling from, from club players. Dahi, it might seem like a silly question, but what made it such a great game? Uh, especially comparing it to the first game, which was a good enough game, but the second game was outstanding. It was outstanding and the quality of hurling was better. I mean, I looked at the first game and I read a lot of reports afterwards and I read a lot of comments afterwards about how fantastic it was. And I spoke to some people at the Offaly game, Kilkenny game last week and I said, I don't buy that. I actually thought the intensity was exactly what everyone had said it was, but that the quality wasn't there. And why, why was it like that? Because when you get committed bunch of sports people and the end goal is this winning. It's not the climb in the steps. It's that that's that's kind of immaterial. That's the, they're the ribbons that's attached afterwards. It's just you get into this bubble. You get into this zone where the most important thing in your life, you're consumed by this thing, and uh, you just had a group of players on both sides who the end goal meant that you were going to go to war and you were willing to do what it took and you were willing to do extraordinary things and you had 30 guys willing to do extraordinary things and that's that's why we had what we had the weekend so credit to to everybody to both sides well done to cooler but credit to both sides and we're seeing a picture of Shane Stapleton who's never shy in coming forward but genuinely delighted for the guy he's a good guy he deserves it um, yeah. after the game I spoke to Sean Moore in the cooler centre back and he said this week we were going to play it on our terms. Last week maybe we played it on the Piershig's terms. Would you agree with that? And can you explain to us how they set out their terms, how they kind of set the tone? Yeah, I think it's a fair point. Because if you look at Kula in every single game to date, it was always played on their terms. If you look at the Leinster final or, or the, 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 the Kilcormick game, very much played on their terms. Wing forwards withdrawn, huge space left inside for Callaghan and, and Kilcormick kind of acquiesced. And it was certainly played on their terms. The puck out strategy, they always found, you know, willing to go short. And KK sat back and allowed them to build. Napiershik looked at the way Kula play and they like space. And Matty Kenny is a Galway man and it's a specific Galway way of playing in many respects. Huge space in front of the inside too. Uh, wing forwards coming very deep. Played on their terms. Clearly last week, Napier Sheik decided, well, under no circumstances is that going to happen. We're just going to crowd every cooler player that gets a ball. He was suffocated. And it was quite clear that they weren't allowed to play the way they wanted to. So they deserve great credit for hanging in and being able to get themselves a draw. So they sat down, they digested what had happened, and they decided, right, Napier Sheik came at us. And they came at us with a force that we'd not met yet. We weren't prepared for it. We struggled with it. Okay, Saturday, you know, more Park, what we're going to do is we're going to meet that head on. We're not going to lose any of the physical exchanges. And outside of that, then we've still got to be able to try and play the brand of Hurling. That's fine for them to say in team meetings. But when you go out on the pitch, it wasn't that in the pier sheet we're going to drop in any way the level of our intensity. And did Kula bring any more intensity than it did the week beforehand? 
you know, you can reflect on games and say, and the immediate aftermath and say, well, we did this different, we did that different. Ultimately, it was a dogfight to the very end. They could have lost it just as easily. But I think what they did do was they openly recognised that Napierstic brought a massive intensity that maybe, maybe the previous week took them by surprise. They were ready for it last weekend and it was just a shootout. It was enthralling stuff, yeah, enthralling stuff. Talk to us a little bit, Dahi, about just how huge an achievement it is to do back-to-back All-Ireland club titles. Like, they're only the fifth club to do it and the only other club not from Galway to have done back-to-back All-Irelands is Burr. So you'd have a great insight into how tough this is. Obviously, your success in the 90s would have had a precipitative kind of impact on 02 and 03, I think it was, when Burr did back-to-back All-Ireland. So talk to us a little bit about how tough it was for Kula and indeed the legacy that could now come as a result of these two successes. Well, one, it's the legacy that they'll create within their own club. Two, it's what Dublin need to f- to feed off again. Dublin need to feed off of this. There needs to be a return for, to Dublin hurling from this. And that means, I hear question marks, if the Kula players and if they all return. Why wouldn't they? You know, when we finished with Borough over the years, we just couldn't wait to get back in with Offaly. We couldn't wait. We, we always took our week and maybe two off, which Eamon Cregan didn't always necessarily like the second week off. But you couldn't wait. And the other club players with Offaly loved when you came back. So, number one, they have a responsibility, not just to Kula. They have a responsibility to Dublin Hurling to come back in with Jira Gilroy and add to this thing in relation to why it's so difficult. Dublin senior hurling championship is notoriously hard won as is Galway as is Tip as is Cork as is Kilkenny in particular I would suggest so to do that coming from let's face it a base not so long ago and I played against Kula many years ago when I hurled with Fogs I mean one man and his dog would go and look at him playing hurling so to create the dynamic within their club of this support base and the underage structures and the way they've harnessed all this underage structure so they've won a very, very demanding Dublin title. To go on then, I mean, they pretty much blew everyone in Leinster away. But it's keeping the appetite. It's the key. Let's face it, you start training kind of at the start of the year, and it's 12 months, and then it's into March. You're talking about 15 months. So this is 30 months that Kula are at what they're at. Not losing a game in the provincial championship, maybe losing in Dublin, but getting in, you know, in the secondary. So it's literally... Two and a half years to keep this winning mentality going for a club team is an extraordinary feat, and it's why so few have done it. Dahi, when you look at the Kula players, they're going back into a Dublin team that are maybe a bit low in confidence and who are looking at a relegation battle potentially from the Liam McCarthy to the Joe McDonough. So how difficult is that going to be for the players? I mean, when you went from Burr to Offaly, you were going into a team who were in All-Ireland contention. So that's that's very difficult. So tell, tell us about the difficulties you see there and the fact that they're kind of ingrained in the Kula system and they're then going into a different system. That, I imagine, poses difficulties as well. Well, that's, that's a very, very interesting question, Ocean, because sometimes you get guys with a club scenario. It's really interesting you're asking that question. Sometimes you get guys in a club scenario which is extremely professionally run, like an inter-county team, which Kula are. Matty Kenny is a very ex- experienced man. They've had a lot of success. And the difficulty is they come into uh, a county setup where early doors, they perceive this is nowhere near as professional as what we're used to. And then what happens is that prevaricates throughout the group dynamic. The Kula boys are chatting to the Kilmacud boys and they're chatting then to the Crave Kiran boys and they're chatting to the Fogs boys and they're going, this is crap, lads. You want to see what we're doing with Kula. And the minute that happens, you're in great difficulty because the manager has lost you. You may not be aware of it yourself as a player, but the minute you start to question your management setup. So what the Kula boys need to do is they need to come in. I don't know, is it something they, they would sit down with Anthony Cunningham and, and Pat Gilroy? I would probably argue no. There needs to be kind of... Gilroy and Cunningham need, need, need to have their own head. Kula boys need to come into this thing and bring a positivity with them into the setup. I think they will, because I think there's there's five or six straight away top class intercounty players. And I think they're professional boys. The only difficulty that will occur is if they start, I suppose in human resources they call them terrorists within an organization. And sometimes it takes just one or two within the group dynamic to start knocking from from, from the inside. And that's the difficulty. But I think listen, they're on a high, they'll want to get in with Dublin. 
They're needed for Dublin. And I think Pat Gilroy is an extremely professional individual who will know how to harness from them and, and, and kind of forensically get into what they do with Kula as well and pick bits from that. You know, he, he's, he's not an expert no more than any of us are. So you harness what the Kula boys have and you build going forward. That's the key. And I think Gilroy has that ability as a man and as a manager. Yeah, Anthony Daly has a great line in the Examiner this morning. He said, if I was Pat Gilroy after Dublin's defeat to Tipperary yesterday, the first thing I would have done was drive down the M50, go into Finnegan's and Dawkey, order a couple of pints and begin this sweet talking to the Kula boys, probably singing above in the stools. And if a couple of them still weren't up out of the bed yet, I'd have gone around to their houses and woken them up for a chat. And he's not far wrong. There is a huge need for these boys, especially when you look at potentially the ball retention skills on Shaw and Croke Park yesterday. And I guess we should move on to this uh, quarterfinal in Croke Park yesterday. And... I, that, that's my question to you. That this ball retention and the errors that Dublin had, I think Tipperary got 12 scores off uh, Dublin errors yesterday. Do you put that more down to their ferocious Tipperary performance and their hunger to get the ball back off Dublin or just poor Dublin skills? Well, it's a mixture of both, to be honest with you. I mean, the quality of player that, that Tipperary have is well known. They're, they're, they are ahead of Dublin in where they are and have always been ahead of Dublin, which is why Dublin kind of need everybody. And let's face it, Tipperary have their own demons over the last number of years. They've not put back-to-back -back all Ireland finals. And I, I, I would have a huge respect for Tipperary and a huge respect for their tradition. But if I was to be critical, I would say by not putting back-to-backs, it's a black mark against them because the ability and the talent is there and they should be and they should have done it to date. And I think it hurts them. I think it hurt Eamon, Corp, Eamon O'Shea. I think it has hurt Michael Ryan. It's interesting they've used over 30 players in the league. Um, Dublin are on a different plane. It's only when, when, when Pat gets, gets these. I, I don't know why we would question why the Kula boys may not go back. I don't know, what, I don't know what, what's in question here. Why wouldn't they I go back? I think it's just a matter of how many of them will go back rather than if they go back and how difficult it's going to be to settle back in because you are jumping from, like you say, being an All-Ireland winner to a different setup. Now, you've covered it and you've said it, and I'm glad you did, that Pat Gilroy is incredibly professional. So I don't think that kind of rot that you talk about that might happen in other counties would happen here. I, I yeah. don't think that's going to be an issue. Regards to Tipperary, it's a good point that Owen has raised um, and the fact that they're trying to strengthen the squad because it's been said many times with the Munster Championship and the format that it's now in, you're going to need more players. There's guys in your squad who were numbers 20 to 26 who might have lost interest going into the summer because they knew they weren't going to get games. Those guys have a chance of getting games now and we're seeing with Tipperary He's testing them. The likes of Billy McCarthy, the likes of Alan Brown. They stepped up yesterday. Would you have been impressed by them? Uh, do you think they've, they've shown enough to suggest that, OK, this year Tipper just that bit deeper? Well, again, I would say a, a, a lot we won't see. We'll, we'll see what we'll see of them on days like yesterday own. But really, it's what he sees down in the training park and how they're setting up down in the training park. But the point you make about the way the championship has been run this year, uh, crucially, absolute crucial. And again, you're right. I mean, we're going into a spate of games starting from May to a championship system and format that we're just not used to, but the players have been crying out for. Injuries will be picked up. The level of physicality that will be involved in these games, I mean, these are, every one of these is a high profile, crunch championship game that you cannot afford to start losing your first or second games. Then there's huge doubt. You'll pick up injuries. Players will get tired. You must have uh, a depth of strength in, in your squad. And I think that's what the likes of Michael Ryan has been doing, to be fair to him, to, to bring this infusion. A bit easier on in the likes of Tipperary probably to bring these guys in when you look at the quality and calibre of player that they have around them, where they're not expected to come in and be the number one player. Teams like Dublin are looking for this find to come in and be kind of our saviour and you need a couple of guys that are going to come in and be a top scorer for you. Tip aren't necessarily looking for that, but what they are looking for is a quality of player that will come in and fit with the tip way of playing Hurland and all that being a tip player you know, requires, which is which is a laudable thing, to be honest with you. So Michael Ryan is building nicely, but you're right in what you're saying. Again, Owen, this is what he's been doing. It's not necessarily about winning a league. It's about preparing a championship and have I got a squad of players that can sustain us through a championship system and bring us all the way to the end of August. 
Uh, just a final point on Dahi, you must mention Wexford, and it felt like another huge event uh, between Wexford and Galway at the weekend. Huge emotion from the fans, huge emotion from Davy afterwards. Like, after the rattling they got off Galway in the second half of that Leinster final last year, do you feel that this was a watershed moment at all? Absolutely. Every single time Wexford do what Wexford did the weekend is a watershed moment. Um, Davy Fitzgerald deserves enormous credit for what he's done with this group of players. And it's... It's not just Davy; it's the structure and it's the professionalism that it, that he brings to it. It, it. it 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 must it must be mentioned. It's it's not it's not a coincidence that it's the professional structure. It's there's no lack of funding going into Wexford, which is the way it should be if you want to be competing at where you're competing. Seven thousand plus turning up again the weekend, and I've heard a lot of people talking about, and I heard Dale over the weekend as well discussing, you know, well, listen, we know that Galway are. Are, are, are not where they're at at the moment, so on and so forth. I don't agree with that. I think Galway went down and they left it all out there. They had a go and they didn't want to. They did not want to lose. It's a little bit like Mayo yesterday. Galway didn't want to lose, so it's not a case to me of okay, Galway lost that. Let's get back to the training park. I think Galway would relish a chance against Kilkenny next weekend. It's a lovely little build up to it. Davy and Wexford deserve huge credit. They're a fine side. They're a good side, and they will cause a hell of a lot of problems this year. Yeah, it's going to be another great weekend of GA action. Dahi Regan, thanks very much for your time. Great stuff. Have a great day, boys.